Hi, my name is Russell Gilmore and I'd like to talk to you about the history of the English slide trumpet and the story of how it came into being. So this talk is called Perfecting the Natural Trumpet because the English slide trumpet is essentially a perfected version of the natural trumpet. They added a clock spring return mechanism for a slide so that you could alter the tuning and indeed play different notes using the sliding mechanism. The story begins with Charles Burney's reaction to James Sargent's trumpet playing at the Handel commemoration performance at Westminster Abbey. The commemoration took place a century after Handel's birth and 25 years since his death. James Sargent played the trumpet shall sound on the natural trumpet. So after hearing a performance that may have sounded a little bit like that, albeit with a lot more reverb in Westminster Abbey, Charles Burney wrote an account of the musical performances in Westminster Abbey and the Pantheon, May 26th, 27th, 29th, and June 3rd and 5th, 1784, in commemoration of Handel. In that article, he wrote, the favorite bass song, The Trumpet Shall Sound, was very well performed by Signor Tasker and Mr. Sargent, who accompanied him on the trumpet admirably. There are, however, some passages in the trumpet part of this air which have always a bad effect from the natural imperfection of the instrument. In Handel's time, composers were not so delicate in writing for the trumpets and French horns as at present, it now being laid down as a rule that the fourth and sixth of a key on both these instruments, being naturally so much out of tune that no player can make them perfect, should never be used but in short passing notes, to which no bass is given that can discover their false intonation. Mr. Sargent's tone is extremely sweet and clear, but every time that he was obliged to dwell upon G, the fourth of D, displeasure appeared in every countenance, for which I was extremely concerned, knowing how inevitable such an effect must be from such a cause. Fifteen years later, John Hyde claimed to have invented the clock spring return mechanism, but even he admitted that Richard Woodham was the first to make such trumpets. They'd possibly been in use since about 1790. John Hyde published a method book in 1799, a new and complete preceptor for the trumpet of bugle horn, in which he wrote, The plain trumpet, being so imperfect and so confined in its scale, I found it necessary to invent something to make it perfect and more universal before I could feel any satisfaction in playing it. Dr. Burney, in his History of Music, has taken particular notice of the imperfect fourth and sixth, which imperfection is completely remedied by the chromatic trumpet, which besides makes a number of new notes never thought of on that instrument, by which he means new notes in the low and middle register that wouldn't have been available without using the slide. So Charles Burney's criticism caused quite a reaction. Speaking of reactions, I'm going to use the analogy of a reflex action, you know, if you touch something hot, which involves a stimulus receptor, coordinator, effector and response. The stimulus was James Sargent's performance of the trumpet shall sound at Westminster Abbey in 1784. The receptor was Charles Burney's comment that every time he was obliged to dwell upon G, the fourth of D, displeasure appeared in every countenance. The coordinator would be the inventor in the 1790s, probably Richard Woodham, but John Hyde seems to have taken most of the credit. The effector would be the Harper family, father and son, Thomas Harper Sr. and Thomas Harper Jr. They made the instrument famous and taught at the London Conservatoires. Another player, John Norton, taught at the Royal Academy of Music until 1827. In 1834, he took part in, and subsequently won, a trumpet battle at Niblo's Garden on Broadway in New York. He competed against Alessandro Gambati, 
There was a huge media following. The New York Times supported Norton, who played the English slide trumpet, and the Evening Star backed Gambati, who was playing the keyed trumpet. Norton noted that when Gambati was playing Handel's song, The Trumpet Shall Sound, he actually was compelled to transpose the trumpet part a full octave below. And finally, response. Now, the response is interesting. William Thomas Park was an oboist who wrote Memoirs from 1784, Handel Commemoration, in 1830. They are partly derived from his own reminiscences, having been engaged in it, and partly from Dr. Burney's book on the subject. He goes on to mention the favourite bass trumpet song, The Trumpet Shall Sound, was uncommonly well sung by Signor Tasca, and was finally accompanied on the trumpet by Mr. Sargent. The imperfect note on the fourth of the key, on the trumpet, has since been rendered perfect by Mr. Hyde's ingenious invention of a slide. So I'm sure you're keen to know what a version rendered perfect would sound like. No pressure. This trumpet's quite a late example of an English slide trumpet from 1885, around a century after the Handel commemoration performance at Westminster Abbey. It was made by W.D. Cubitt, Son and Co. on 56 Great Marlborough Street in London. <laughs> 